Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Tip of the Week. Now, if you're seeing this tip someplace else, be sure to come back by our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details, links to the site, links to the literature that I'm talking about today, and so on. Today we're going to be talking about a tool called Snip Effect 4.0. Now, Snip Effect has been around for a while, but I saw a paper recently that described some of their new features and wanted to check it out. So if you want to go to their site, see snipeffect.switchlab.org. Then you'll find yourself on the home page that looks like this. Now, let's talk about what's in Snip Effect 4.0. So it's really about human mutation vari and variations that would affect human proteins. And they explore this in a number of different ways. I'm going to go to the About page to um, tell you about one of the key features about the data that you'll, you'll explore here. Now, it does not contain every SNP and DB SNP. There's a subset of variations that the folks here have chosen to explore. And the ones that they've chosen to explore are based on the Unipro references, in fact. So you'll find lots of protein information, tremendous amount of protein information in Uniprot, and there's a subset of that uh, that contains variation information about these human proteins. And so what this team has chosen to do is take that subset of information and they run it through a series of um, algorithms that will explore whether the variation that they're seeing would have some kind of effect on that protein and a number of different features. So aggregation, binding, if the variations would wind up in a domain that's important to you, you want to know that. Um, if there's a, a effect on the catalytic site, that might be important to you. And there's also um, structural analysis. If there's a structure available, they'll take a look at that with the fold X algorithm to see if it would affect the um, protein structure. So there are a number of ways they've t chosen to look at these variations, and you can learn more about the, all of these algorithms from their um, help and documentation and um, the paper as well. So be sure to check that out. But I wanted you to understand that it's not every SNP and DB SNP, but it's this subset of variation information that you'll find here at this site. So I'm going to go back to the home page by clicking the uh, link at the top here, and you can access the, the features here in a couple of different ways. You could you could click the um, images here, or you could click the link for database to go to the same thing. Now, I won't have time to talk about it, but there are a couple of other features here. One of them is that you could submit your own proteins for analysis with the um, tools that they've got, so be sure to check that out. Come back and check that out later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore the database to give you a sense of what's available when you look at a SNP effect record. So either click the link for database or the image here to go to the database, and what you'll find is a list of all all the mutations they've got right now. They've got over 60,000 mutations from these Uniprot records, and they update this periodically. And you could scan through them all, actually. They've got them all listed page by page, and you could choose to do that. Now, there are other ways to do that, that though. If you, if you have um, specific features or specific proteins you're interested in, of course, you can filter this data set for that. So, what you like, for example, if you were interested in Parkinson's SNPs, maybe you could look for Parkinson related SNPs like that. Um, and that's a handy way to do that. You could choose to uh, to explore by mutation type, and they they um, tell more talk more about how they've characterized these in the um, help and documentation. If you have a Uniprot ID for your protein of interest, of course, you could you could quickly go there. If you've got a gene name, you could try that as well. If you have a dbSNP ID, you can try to see if it's here. Now, not all the variations here correspond to dbSNP IDs, so keep that in mind. Um, but if there is a dbSNP ID that you're interested in, try that out. And you could also choose to look at the different algorithms. Um, either um, with the full set of information or increased or decreased, for example, here in the case of Tango, um, if that's the feature that you're particularly interested about um, the variations that you're exploring. But let's just do a quick look at what one of the pages would look like. Um, I'm going to click just the very top one, just the first one, just for our example. I'm going to click the variant here. So if I look at the variant here, the specific information, what I get is the information about the details of this. It's where the variation we located in the protein and where the um, features of the different algorithms have identified changes or no changes um, would be indicated here on the page. If you were specifically interested in whether there was um, an aspect of this um, algorithm that detected a, a, a change here, you could open that up and, and you'd see further details about that. So in this case, there's no change. But there may be times where you'll find that um, there were other things that you wanted to explore. Now, another thing you could do, you, instead of just looking at the variation page like we've done here, you could look at all of the, the effects on a protein. And if you go to the protein links, you could do this from the, the first page as well, you could see an overview, a summary of the whole protein, and get more details about that. Again, the same types of things are available here, the summary information, or you can explore the different algorithms in more detail. So it's a really nice site that contains information on human variation. Check out Snip Effect 4.0. Thanks for your time.